Yes, uh, welcome to this uh, side event about uh, local climate sustainability solutions in the global stock take. Uh, the, oh, um, okay, I think the sound is good now, and I'd like to welcome on behalf of International Network for Sustainable Energy and Sustainable Energy in Denmark. We have four organizers, so I'd like to give the word also to welcome from, from Suswatch, Kenya. Thank you so much, and uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, welcome all the participants, and uh, feel free. I know we are going to have a, a very meaningful uh, engagement, and uh, from here, uh, we'll be having uh, Mary Swai from Tatedo, who uh, will be talking uh, on behalf of uh, East, uh, Infos East Africa, uh, that is from Tanzania. Yeah. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Was, uh, many of uh, people are uh, li uh, watching it live. Uh, you welcome everyone sitting here and who are live. I'm uh, Sanjeev Nathan from Integrated System Energy and Ecological Development Association in SEDA, India. Uh, welcome you all, and I hope that you will have a fruitful evening. Uh, thank you so much. Hello, uh, this is uh, Abdul Arif. Uh, I am from Bangladesh. I work for Gramin Shakti, and I welcome you all to this session, and hope, hope that uh, we'll have a very fruitful discussion over here. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, I would like to Uh, I would like to welcome all of you, and uh, I. How, how to... Yes. Um, the title of the event is Local Climate Sustainable Energy Solutions in Global Stocktake Why, How, and From Where. And we are happy to be here at the UNFCC COP27, and we would like to emphasize the local solutions importance in the global stock take. Local solutions are important for climate targets and must be better included in global stock take. We present local climate solutions from three continents, East Africa, South Asia, and Europe. How to include them in the global stock take? We also give an overview of differences they can make for faster global climate mitigation, adaptation, poverty, and women empowerment. Welcome, warm welcome to everybody. And uh, it's my privilege to introduce INFORCE to all of you, International Network for Sustainable Energy. Uh, we are uh, the organizer and uh, together with uh, INSEDA, uh, Suswash Kenya, and Sustainable Energy. They are all members of INFORCE. INFORCE is a network of 140 NGOs worldwide, formed in 1992 at Rio Earth Summit, the Unsert Conference. We are just 30 years old now. It was 30 years ago when the Rio Conference was. It's an international voice of NGOs promoting renewable energy, energy efficiency, fossil-free, nuclear-free, and 100% renewables future. We are making scenarios. We are aiming to protect environment, reduce poverty, and women empowerment. We are publishing sustainable energy news. The, the last sustainable energy news just now is the number 86. We have a big contact database with 1,000 contacts, publications, and database for local sustainable solutions. We follow UNFCC and the UN Sustainable Development Conferences and, of course, the Rio conferences. We are active regional NGO co cooperation with uh, Africa, Europe, and South Asia. In the next presentations, you will hear uh, from these three regions' presentations how the local solutions can contribute to the, to the global stock take. And we are here. This is a picture of our exhibition in COP27. Uh, with a group of people uh, who are also present here. This was what I was speaking about. <laughs> so the next speaker is Mary Swai, uh, online, if she is online. Promoti pr promoting local solutions as important to climate and development solutions in East Africa.
okay, it is not held there, so we introduce 100% renewable scenarios in Uganda. Uh, Richard Kimbova from Uganda Coalition for Sustainable Development and Inforce East Africa. And I'm just uh, going down to the, his presentation. Yes, uh, welcome, Richard. Are you online? Richard, we will show the presentation and you only need to speak. As there are connection pro problems in Uganda, so also yes, in Tanzania, so we will, uh, I would like to invite Nobad Niandir to from uh, Suswash, Kenya, to present uh, the local solutions in uh, global stock tech, key messages from East Africa, and 100% renewables in Kenya. Welcome, Robert. Thank you so much, uh, and as has been mentioned, my name is Nobat Nyandire from uh, uh, Sustainable Environmental Development Watch, Saswatch Kenya, the national coordinator. So for today, I'm going to uh, just present to you on uh, the local uh, uh, solutions and uh, the importance in uh, the global stock tech process, and some of these key messages that are coming from East Africa. So. From this, uh, I would just like to mention a, a brief about Saswatch Kenya. It's a member organization that was uh, formed in 2002, and uh, it's part of the Global Sustainability Network. And uh, we registered this organization officially in 2011. And from there, then uh, we are, uh, the organization is composed of different civil society organizations that are engaged in varied thematic issues uh, contributing to sustainable development. So we've been operating in East Africa and also at the international level, where in East Africa we've been uh, operating in uh, the five East African countries, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Burundi. And from there, then uh, we also at the international level, we've been engaged so much in the uh, negotiations where we engage in uh, different uh, thematic areas as well. And from there, then we've been able to influence uh, uh, policy development uh, on climate change, renewable energy and others, and uh, we've also been able to uh, capacity build different communities on uh, different aspects of uh, sustainable development and uh, climate change. So to this end, uh, what we did uh, with this uh, East African Civil Society for Sustainable Energy and Climate Action Project is that uh, we established uh, uh, a network where uh, three organizations in these uh, uh, different countries are working together. And from there, then uh, 
we established that one of the sectors affected and contributing towards climate change is energy, and the use of unsustainable energy sources contribute a great deal uh, towards the global greenhouse gas uh, emission, in which the main contributor uh, to climate change phenomenon. So, unfortunately, in East Africa, the main energy sources are uh, unsustainable, contributing, uh, constitu uh, constituting to biomass and fossil fuel use. Uh, they are there, there is actually that need to uh, have that dialogue as uh, we are having this uh, transition uh, period. So when we are looking at this, then uh, we have to put uh, different aspects of uh, sustainable energy to be in line with uh, sustainable development goal number seven and uh, uh, 13. And to this end, what we've achieved with this uh, project, uh, we've managed to increase access to sustainable energy and other climate solutions for local communities in Kenya, Tanzania, and uh, Uganda, including both uh, women and uh, men's full and effective participation in leadership and uh, for improved livelihoods and uh, reduction of poverty. So this we've done because uh, from these uh, uh, local solutions, which uh, my colleagues will present, if at all they, become, uh, they come online, then the, we have been able to uh, impart that knowledge and uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, worked with the communities so that they have some other livelihood interventions which are, uh, help in improving uh, their livelihoods. So we've achieved this through uh, different uh, civil society organizations dialogue on transitioning uh, to 100% renewable energy, mapping the, the, and disseminating some of these local solutions on renewable energy and other uh, climate and, and uh, issues. And uh, from there then we've been able to develop 100% uh, renewable energy uh, scenarios for Kenya by 2050. And we are currently in the process also of finalizing the 100% renewable energy for uh, uh, Tanzania, for uh, Uganda. For Tanzania, it has already been developed by other organizations. We're just looking at how then we can partner together so that we revise that uh, uh, document. So why do we talk about uh, global stock tech? And uh, why do we want to include uh, local solutions in global stock tech? As we are all aware, uh, the, 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 the globe, or maybe the nations, uh, at coming together, discussing in the technical dialogues on how then we can take stock of uh, the implementation of a re-agreement. And in this then we are looking at how then uh, are they reporting, uh, how are they actually getting or maybe putting into uh, use the kind of finances that uh, they have been uh, given to the, the different nations. So we are looking at the different uh, reporting requirements under the convention and also when uh, this transition will come to the Paris Agreement then uh, there are different aspects, uh, be it climate finance and, and others. So from this then we've really looked at it and then we've uh, 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 mentioned and maybe we've recognized that uh, from the submitted NDCs, uh, the local energy solutions are just partly reflected, uh, yet they are really helping to secure energy, uh, sustainable energy for development and poverty reduction. So for global sector, uh, it should therefore include reporting on the extent of which the local solutions are used in, uh, in each country and how they are included in climate plants in the NDCs and their potential to contribute to further greenhouse gas emission reduction, res resilience building and adaptation. So from uh, the UNEP's um, NDC gap analysis report, the current NDCs, if implemented, they're likely to still fall short of meeting the Paris Agreement goals of uh, 1.5 uh, degrees Celsius. And uh, from here then, um, we've, uh, we should uh, I advocate for the GST to uh, uh, be used to identify additional actions that can increase ambition. And here the local solutions have a very huge potential, as uh, maybe I will be shown with my colleagues. Uh, the three basic issues that have to be taken into account include recognition of uh, local uh, solutions to be part of the NDCs, uh, continuous learning uh, from multi-actor ac actions on uh, the ground to mitigate and adapt to climate change and to scale up provision of access to uh, climate finance. And uh, when we're talking about this climate finance, then we're looking at uh, how then different actors can uh, be engaged in implementing local solutions, including the civil societies, communities, women, youth, and other groups, so that they are able to implement local solutions. So if you want to get more information, you can contact us. We have a lot of uh, information uh, regarding the work that we're doing. If you want to know about the project, there is that website that has been uh, uh, highlighted. We have the online catalog, which you can also access, and also the 100% uh, renewable energy, which uh, you can also access. So thank you so much, and I'll be looking forward to uh, engaging in more discussions on it. Thank you.
Thank you very much. And I just would like to know that if there is any online connection to our uh, speakers from Uganda and uh, Tanzania. Uh, can you inform me? How, uh, is there any connections? Please? Okay. Richard, are you, can you hear us and uh, can you try to speak? Okay, so I don't think so there is a connection. So I would like to give the word to Gona Boya Olesen, who would uh, present the uh, Uganda 100% renewable energy study. So as you could see that we were we having this uh, global stock take uh, initiatives and then we were speaking, uh, Norbert was speaking about 100% uh, renewables in uh, Kenya. And now Gunnar will speak about the 100% renewables in, in uh, Uganda. And then you have to go back. Are you with your speakers about? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, this is supposed to be, this is the, the launch for the first time we present a study for 100% renewable energy in uh, Uganda. And uh, I'm very sorry that uh, my, my Ugandan colleagues, uh, including Richard Kimboba, who should have been here and speaking, that we were not able to make the, con uh, the connection. But since we've been working together, it's been a cooperative effect, I can also present what, what we are having here. Here's a report, anybody who'd like to see it can come up and it'll be online. If it's not online already, it'll be at definitely tomorrow on our website and also on the Uganda Coalition for Sustainable Development website. Uh, Uganda Coalition is, uh, uh, for Sustainable Development is the national coordinator of uh, INFORCE and uh, an active member of INFORCE East Africa, uh, where they also are uh, partner in this ISCA project that Norbert just told about. And uh, we've worked on this 100% renewable energy because we think it's important to see how uh, energy can be provided for an African country to, together with development. Uh, so uh, it's also about not about present demands because presently there's a lot of renewable energy in Uganda, but if they really want to develop as the uh, government is proposing, then they'll be need a lot more energy. And can you also get that from renewables? That's a big question, really. And uh, here we have combined potentials for renewable energy and energy efficiency, and together with the expected growth. And uh, well, the methodology was that we made a literature review. We uh, discussed it with a number of experts. And then we made an energy modeling using some modeling tools that we have in Inforce. If you look at the potential for Uganda, they have a huge potential of hydropower, and not all of it is used, and maybe not all of it should be used, but uh, we had taken in that 4,500 megawatt. Geothermal is also quite big, but not as big as in, in Kenya now. Uh, biomass co-generation is an option, but of course there's a limited amount of biomass. For solar, there's practically no limits, because there are very sunny areas in, uh, in Uganda. And uh, wind is not that much like in, for instance, neighboring Kenya. And um, so what we are uh, doing, we have made this plan that there's an overview uh, of uh, renewable energy and, uh, at this, and how Uganda at the same time can move from a low income country to a middle income country and reduce biomass use to sustainable levels. This has been some of our uh, backgrounds. And uh, we made two scenarios, one business as usual, where you'd, uh, assuming Uganda would just use more and more fossil fuel, and a 100% renewable scenario. Um, and our result is that the economy is actually better with 100% renewable energy uh, than the business as usual uh, with the future large imports of uh, fossil fuels. Uh, but uh, the Problem is one problem of Uganda is that biomass is beyond sustainability limits, 
uh, they are using something like uh, 40, uh, 44 million tons per year, but even though that should be close to sustainable level, not all of it can be harvested sustainably. So uh, there we have a challenge. Uh, then we have, these are just some of the uh, assumptions. I think I'll go quickly through and come to some of the results. Here you can see what the demand would look like in a uh, primary energy demand and also with the total, uh, with total energy demand for the one side we have the uh, business as usual and then we have the 100% renewable scenario where you can see the scale is uh, somewhat lower in the renewable scenario assuming they'll not use so much energy when they really use efficient uh, efficiency but also that the biomass will be well lower but then renewables with wind and solar and hydro and geothermal will, will come in and uh, here's what we see with the sustainability level that gradually they passed the sustainable level of biomass some time back in 2010 and they can come back to that around 2030 if there's a concerted effort to go to the more efficient technologies. This is about, uh, about emissions and uh, some of the things we are doing promoting is a super efficient domestic and institutional cook stoves which are much more efficient than the ones they have today but of course, gradually at the moment, they're mainly for institutional use. Electric vehicles are coming fast. These are some examples. Um, yeah, more uh, about cook stoves because so much energy in Uganda is used for cooking. Uh, and therefore, we're also promoting electric pressure cookers for the cities instead of charcoal and LPG because it's a very efficient way of producing uh, a cooking. Just you need power, of course. And uh, well, that's basically our presentation. And then read more here and on the internet. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. And uh, I just uh, would like to go back to Mary's presentation, uh, just in in a very, oh, sorry, yeah. Um, uh, Mary Swai uh, from Tetero Sustainable, oops, Sustainable Energy Servi Services Organizations and Infos East Africa. Promoting local solutions as important climate and development solutions in East Africa. And uh, she would have spoken about uh, Tatero, which is a uh, 30 years uh, experience in uh, local solutions. Um, it's a quite big organization in, uh, in Tanzania who is very uh, devoted to the local solutions, cook stoves, and so on. It is also coordinator of Infos East Africa. And then she will have spoken about why local uh, solutions is important. Globally, 733 million people are without access to electricity, 80% of them in Africa. 2.4 billion people do not have access to clean cooking. 30% are in the sub-Saharan Africa. Heavy reliance on traditional fuel sources have environmental effects and health results. Small scale and locally based sustainable energy projects are recognized as important forms of the development as a, a, assistance for reaching the energy poor and contributing to the uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Local sustainable and affordable energy solutions can play a key role in supporting the transition towards the more sustainable energy systems to population most widely affected by the energy poverty. And then uh, this is how they uh, uh, contribute to the mitigation, solar power, water pumps, solar systems, and then there are a couple of examples from biogas to solar dryers to organic gardening, solar PV, solar powered refrigerators. And this is the catalog we have. Uh, it is localsolutions.infos.org. And they are, in this picture it says 50, but we already have 60 different uh, uh, successful cases in uh, different categories like cooking, cooking fuels, light, electricity, water, growing food, transport, and solar um, dryers, for example, solar heat. 
Thank you very much. And now I would like to give the word to Gunnar Boya Olesen again in uh, Europe. And uh, I think you will just present, uh, he is presenting Infos Europe and Sustainable Energy Denmark. Uh, yes, um, hello again. Uh, this uh, presentation is from, from some of the European work we are doing in the International Network for Sustainable India. In Europe we have uh, more than 60 members. Uh, it's a quite active region. We are working as a European civil society wise for renewables, efficiency and sufficiency. 100% renewable energy scenarios and strategies. And uh, we're also working on how to uh, more sustainable lifestyles with the EU fulfill project and uh, other projects. There's of interest, we have some more information about that. Uh, we act on EU climate policies and East-West cooperation. At the moment, we have a project supporting Ukraine. But uh, I will speak about is uh, how we are working to get to 1.5 degree in with the European contribution. We, we are working on scenarios and plans how to cut down emissions rapidly. We are working on the, there's a whole series of scenarios which are showing how it can be done. We are working both with the clever scenario, with the bottom-up scenario. We want to work with energy efficiency, renewable energy, of course, and efficiency. And we're also working with the Climate Action Network and others with the Paris Agreement compatible scenario. I mentioned a few other scenarios just to show that there's a lot of ways where we actually can, that studies which are supporting how we can become 100% renewable energy in Europe. Um, there's enough renewables, of course. This is electricity for fossil free Europe by 2040, with the solar, the yellow one at the top, being, of course, much bigger than today. Uh, wind power with the light blue and then with the hydropower more or less stable as it is today with the dark blue and then you see how the fossil fuels with the white gas and the brown coal and also nuclear is gradually phased out and then there's only been a little bit of nuclear remaining in 2040 in that scenario in all scenarios it's all phased out by then because it's not really needed if you have the other so and of course this means a lot of variating power, but still the hydropower is one way of regulating it. Um, but uh, another way which is also important is we can use the energy much more efficient. Even though Europe is relatively efficient today compared to past situations, we can save, say, 40% of the heat in European buildings. We can save at least 20% of the electricity. And when we change to heat pumps and heating and electric cars, we are saving some two-thirds of the energy for respective heating and for cars, but of course then we need more electricity, so we need to green electricity to make it happen. Um, but one thing we started to work on more recently is that we don't only can look at renewables and efficiency, but also we can say more uh, with what we call energy sufficiency. We showed that we could save 20% on top of what we already had saved with the other things. And here's a number of things how we're doing it for we can, many people in some countries in Europe, for instance Denmark, live in very big houses, actually not needed. It's just a way that it's been accustomed, so we can simply move to smaller houses or build less houses and make it easier for people to move when they don't need so big houses. We can have a little less indoor temperature. We can, uh, for laundry, electricity savings, there's a lot of, uh, we can have some better taps and showers. And, uh, but the big, improvements is actually to have a better sustainability, uh, to, uh, sustainable mobility plans. And there are some to the next side, you can see some of the things that how we can actually use less energy in the uh, transport. A lot of the transport in Europe is simply commuting, people going to work, and also people going well, longer distances where improved railway and frequent trains can make it more uh, more interesting to take a railway rather than the car, which is one way of doing it. Urban planning, where you can have all the facilities you need within 15 minutes of walking or bicycling from where you are. The 15 minute city, which is now being tried in Paris, which is a very big city, but then it should be combined into a lot of small cities. Uh, also bicycles can do a lot in Europe with super bicycle passes, where it's attractive to use bicycles. 
we can uh, reduce the road speed, so we use less energy with 100 km per hour on motorways and lower speeds on others. Small things like more expensive parking, so it's more attractive to not use a car when you go to a city. And in Denmark and many other European countries, there's a kind of tax, so tax cut for commuting, and that's actually driving up the commuting. And then road pricing is another one. Uh, then we have, uh, but to get all this to work, we also need a system, electric system that can balance renewable supply and demand 24-7. Therefore, we've uh, been running a number of models which are trying to see every hour of the year how it's actually possible to meet supply and demand, but particular in electricity, you need to have this constant match. And here's some example from Denmark where you see the, on the top, you see the big variations, and the yellow is the wind that is going up and down, and then on the uh, below, below, you see electricity demand where we have the blue normal demand, but then on top of that we have electrolyzers making some hydrogen. We have heat pumps, which are the brown ones, which are also going up and down uh, because they can be producing and to heat storages. And then there's import and export also because we are interdependent of each other and that's also one way of doing it. Looking at the economy, uh, we have uh, see that there's a good economy and sustainable energy transition. On the left is the business as usual, and to the right you see the 100% renewable energy, which actually has slightly lower cost, but a lot more investments and, of course, less fuel costs. Uh, ending up with the messages for GST. Uh, so the global stock take is at, now is ended here at the COP27, but next year we'll continue with the dialogues. And how do NDCs? The question is that we need to have in this dialogue and this actually blow stock take. We need to see how our NDCs treat policies for energy efficiency and sustainable lifestyles if they are an important contributor to Europe to reduce European and other rich countries consumption. But also we need to ask if the NDCs and this long term low energy development strategies are leading to fossil fuel phase out and 100 percent renewable energy. So GST should report on this both of this and consider uh, it for new NDC, so it could be included in the recommendations from the GST to the next phase of our uh, of the NDCs and the climate action. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for the presentation. It's exciting what's happening in Europe. And now, after East Africa and Europe, we are traveling to South Asia. And I would like to present, uh, we, will, uh, we will have presentations from Nepal, India, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. And uh, this is about eco -vill an eco-village develop uh, development initiatives and um, promoting local activities in South Asia supported by Eco-Village Development Initiatives is the title what uh, Enzo Sharma from CRT Nepal, Center for Rural Technology Nepal will uh, present and a uh, warm welcome to you. Namaste and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Anja Sarma, Deputy Director of Center for Rural Technology in Nepal. Today, I'll be talking about promoting local activities in South Asia, supported by Eco-Village Development Initiatives. I'll be talking what, why, where, and how. So here's a picture that shows a mega city of South Asia. It's Mumbai. But this is not the entire reality of South Asia. So we have also villages like this, where 50% uh, of the population reside. So development of villages is linked with the sustainable development of the whole subcontinent. We have, uh, so we have developed a concept of eco-village where we target poverty reduction, uh, climate adaptation and mitigations, and sustainable development. Eco-village concept uh, it's an integrated bottom-up approach creating development focused on low-carbon communities 
the implementation of inexpensive renewable energy solutions, food security intervention, and livelihood enhancement. So Ecovillage development is all about sustainable consumption, um, conservation and management of environment. Uh, I'll be talking about few of the characteristics of EVD, Ecovillage development. Participation of rural community in planning, what we do is that we gather the community and uh, talk to them about their needs, their difficulties, and how can that be resolved using the local resources. Then we then we enhance the capacity of the community to adapt to the local solutions, uh, optimum utilization of local resources, adoption of climate smart agro practices because it is the sector that has been mostly impacted by the climate changes uh, due to rainfall variability and uh, uh, unpredictable climate variations. Uh, then we link the agriculture with entrepreneurship, so we develop the capacity of the local beneficiaries. Integration of renewable uh, technologies, the EVD basket contains a lot of uh, numerous uh, renewable energy technologies that can directly impact the livelihood of the community. Uh, then the productive use of renewable energy, just taking the renewable energy and putting at home doesn't ensure it's being productively used, so we ensure the productive use of energy as well. Uh, the inclusive decision-making process, this ensures that all the marginalized community and marginalized people, unprivileged people are also taken together on board and then we have a planning process so that the intervention also benefits them. Conservation of indigenous practices, when we talk about community-led initiatives, there are always knowledge that are always useful. That it doesn't mean that the knowledge is sufficient but it doesn't either mean that it is invalid. So we uh, focus on conservation of indigenous practices, uh, solid, solid waste management at local levels, uh, that is what we have also been doing. So I like, I take this privilege to uh, inform you that EVD project contributes to 14 SDGs out of 17. So first of all, it's poverty reduction because the initiatives are linked with the income, uh, then we have reduction in po poverty because the quality of the production is increased, particularly in agriculture. Good health because there is, uh, we reduce the indoor air pollution and outdoor air pollution. We enhance the capacity of the women and farmers, so it's good education, quality education, target number four. Then we have gender equality in target number five where women are uh, taken in board for the planning processes also. Availability of green water uh, from roof water harvesting and grey water reclamations, uh, also in focus on sanitation of, through biogas and composting. Clean energy, this is the um, fundamental, the core of Ecovillage development where we promote renewable energies for electricity productions uh, and reducing inefficient uh, consumption of the technologies. Then we have economic growth through income generation activities. Uh, the project focuses on reducing equality, inequalities and involve most vulnerable population. Responsible production and consumption I have already talked about and we all are together for climate actions. Uh, the EVD concept involves promotion of home forestry and soil and water conservations. Uh, then target number 16. The concept involves responsive inclusion of participatory and representative decision making at all levels. So uh, the project has been implemented in uh, various countries in partnership with the international partners as well. So the EVD uh, Ecovillage Deployment is being developed in four countries in South Asia, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, India and Nepal. Uh, it's, it is being supported by uh, SISU in partnership with Kansa, Infos, and DIB. The implementing partners are CRT Nepal, INSEDA India, IDEA Sri Lanka, and Gramin Sakti Bangladesh. How far we have come with the EVD initiatives? Uh, EVD initiative is started in 2015, so we are now at the phase four of EVD concept, where we have been implementing uh, the EVD evidence collected from the previous projects in the scale up. The uh, second activity is the advocacy of local sustainable solutions at local and international level. So the first picture shows uh, uh, 
participation of local for the planning at the local level in Nepal. And the second picture shows that we have been uh, participating continuously in COP since 2015 and um, we have been advocating for local solutions. We have publications and outreach. Uh, the first is the proposal of uh, Ecovillage Development as Climate Solution for South Asia. Uh, social technical manual where the, each technology is, uh, where the local people can read it and have uh, built it on their own locally. Uh, we have white papers and feasibility studies in India, Nepal, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. Also, we uh, publish sustainable news, sustainable energy news, and now we are at the 86th issue of this. Uh, we regularly publish policy brief of various countries, and we also have open database, which will be discussed by my friend. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Anzu. And now I would like to introduce uh, Sanjeev Nathan from INSEDA and the Info South Asia coordinator. He will speak about successes with local solutions in South Asia and their promotion. Welcome. Thank you, Judith. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, all sitting here and uh, living, uh, watching us live. I am Sanjeev Nathan from INSEDA. This is Integrated Sustainable Energy and Ecological Development Association. And we'll be talking about the successes with the local solutions. Uh, just a brief about uh, INSEDA. INSEDA is an organization, is an NGO working uh, in India and South Asia since 1995. And uh, we, are, we have observatory status since uh, uh, 2015. And Dr. Raymond Miles, our president, come chief executive in SEDA, is one of the founder members of Enforce, and we are uh, hosting uh, Enforce South Asia, uh, regional coordinator. And uh, Mr. Miles is the innovator of low carbon, bamboo-based, affordable green technologies developed by Inseda. Uh, we have uh, designed three biogas plants, Deen Bandhu, Gramin Bandhu, and high rate uh, biophysic plant and innovated uh, climate friendly eco village development concept um, and transfer these technologies to Cameroon, Uganda and we are also uh, implementing a carbon credit project in India. Uh, as you, uh, we know all four countries are creating a model village where we are uh, installing a basket of solutions uh, which are mainly focused on women as you uh, mentioned and you mentioned earlier is all for uh, uh, climate uh, mitigation and as well as helping rural communities. Uh, just a brief uh, of, uh, of the technologies which I am, which we am, I am discussing. First one is uh, bamboo reinforced uh, biogas uh, plant. Uh, this plant is uh, constructed using bamboo frame and uh, uh, plaster from uh, both inside and outside. Uh, earlier, the plants uh, almost uh, uh, the plants which are being constructed are uh, you, uh, they use bricks, and uh, bricks are made of uh, good soil, which are harmful for the environment. Uh, so we are replacing bricks with uh, bamboo frame, and bamboo frame is woven by women. Uh, women uh, weave it, and then masons uh, uh, plaster it from both sides, and uh, you have a good. Uh, manure produced out of it and women use uh, cooking gas which is uh, equivalent just like uh, LPG gas. So it is improvement of kitchen, improvement of uh, soil health. And then we have uh, uh, rainwater harvesting systems. So you can see this is also made of bamboo frames. So these also remove uh, bricks and replace bricks. And then we have poly solar poly greenhouse which makes a bamboo frame and also bamboo shelter. Uh, bamboo house uh, or bamboo sh uh, shelter made of uh, bamboo and bamboo compost baskets and uh, you have solar turner dryer where women uh, can uh, dry the perishable items uh, which uh, they, they will anyway lose uh, and um, this vermi compost basket and vermi compost you know earthworms they convert uh, agro waste and uh, uh, bovine dung into a good quality manure in 30 days uh, that is used in organic kitchen, uh, kitchen garden. 
uh, and also in the uh, energy plantation, horticulture, and forestry. And in this, we also uh, plant, we use, uh, distribute saplings of uh, herbal uh, plants so that they in, uh, uh, improve immunity. Now, coming to the kitchen, uh, we have uh, the Hira cook stove and the uh, Jwala uh, cook stove, at this, you can see at the bottom. Uh, these cook stoves are Uh, used because traditionally the, uh, in India and South Asia, uh, women are using kitchen with uh, traditional stoves which uh, uh, fill with smoke in the kitchen. And uh, these stoves which are smokeless and also reduce uh, firewood, uh, uh, almost 30%. And Hira cook stove you can see there's a water tank here uh, which um, uh, provides a little, uh, uses the uh, excess heat and, uh, and warms the water and we have provided a, a fan that pushes the gases into a bucket of water. So you have outdoor pollution control and indoor pollution control and, um, and clean kitchen. And with that solar panel, uh, women also can uh, have a lighting and a mobile charging facility. And then we have a day-night solar cooker, which is uh, having batteries. And we are also planning to have an e-pressure cooker run by uh, the system. And then solar uh, lights and solar street light and lantern. And solar street lights are, of course, our villages are dark and it's good. But then uh, solar lantern, uh, women are so happy with it that they can, you know, uh, cook the meals and um, uh, where there's dark and children can study and they can take it out for um, uh, when they go to the farm for irrigation. And the similar technologies like uh, Hydraulic ram improved water mill, which, is, which generates electricity and solar water pumps and uh, all the other technologies. Apart from that, uh, uh, induction cooker and renewable water lifting, they are uh, being implemented in uh, Nepal by CRT. And Gramin Shakti Bangladesh, apart from these technologies, solar home systems, they, are, uh, they have installed a number of solar system, home systems. And in Bangladesh, 6 million home systems, solar home systems have been installed and the solar water pump and uh, 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 street lights and biogas, all these technologies uh, they are implementing. And in Sri Lanka, this Anagi store was 1.5 million they have already distributed uh, in, the, in uh, Sri Lanka. And 1.5, there is scope of another 1.5 million. And um, apart from other technologies, including movable uh, institutional gas stores, is, uh, they are also working on improvement uh, in Brick making. Now I come back to the brick. We remove the bricks, and bricks are so uh, making bricks uses the topsoil. And this uh, improved book uh, making, uh, brick making, uh, saves 20% of the clay. That's a good soil, and also 50% of energy. And uh, there's a huge scope uh, of these all the technologies. Like in India, if you use uh, improved coke stove, 150 million families can save 100, 100 million tons of firewood and uh, 150 million tons of CO2 can be saved. Same way biogas plants, 75 million biogas plants can be constructed in India itself, and 200 million tons of firewood and 300 million tons of CO2 can be saved from that. 150 million families can have rainwater harvesting systems, and uh, as I told, uh, Bangladesh is saturated with 6 million households, uh, solar home systems, but uh, we have a scope in India and Sri Lanka and all other uh, countries, any African countries, uh, to have these solar home systems. And similarly, induction stove, uh, 1.5 million households can have in Nepal this uh, uh, induction cook stove. And the same scope is there in India as well. To, this will save electricity and uh, save and have clean kitchen. And then uh, Anagi stoves, uh, almost 1.5 million uh, stoves I have mentioned is still uh, pending. And uh, there is scope of uh, another that. And then we can also you know, Im use those technologies in other countries. Uh, environment, social impacts, I have seen, okay, uh, just uh, closing it. And you see, apart from the soil health and clean kitchen, we, we use bamboo. And bamboo helps in drawdown of CO2, environment restoration, soil regeneration and restoration, uh, and erosion control, moisture conservation, and add source for income uh, to women and uh, farmers. So there's a huge scope potential. And uh, we need, uh, of course, this solution, not only in India or South Asia, but across the globe, particularly in Africa. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Sanjeev. And now we are going uh, towards to Bangladesh. Uh, Arif, uh, I would like would welcome to Abdul Arif from Gramin Shakti, Bangladesh. He will speak about the launching of a database documenting successful local solutions. Welcome, the floor is yours. Hi, uh, as you did said, I am Arif from Bangladesh and I work for Gramin Shakti. And here I am to uh, talk about, about the uh, database which we uh, developed uh, through our this partnership under the umbrella of Inforce. And uh, before jumping into the database, uh, I'll take the opportunity to, to say a few words about my organization, uh, which is Gramin Shakti. And uh, this was founded by Nobel laureate Professor Mohammad Yunus around 25 years back with this aim of uh, creating access to electricity for the, our people. Uh, back then, like 25 years back, only only 30 or 40 percent of our people they have got access to electricity. And uh, this gentleman, he he understood that without access to electricity, it's quite difficult to to uh, to uh, to uh, do the dev social development. So with this novel idea, he founded Gramin Shakti, and today here here we are. And uh, these are few of our milestones. Like uh, in Bangladesh, we have uh, installed around 1.8 million solar home systems. Uh, that accounts for uh, 45 percent then of the national share, and uh, with uh, our solutions, we are uh, we are uh, benefiting around 8 to 10 million of our our local people. We have some other achievements also, like we have installed 1 million so, uh, improved cocoa stove and 35,000 biogas plants. Uh, yeah, and being said so, I am uh, I am now tell about how uh, with uh, with EVD and uh, with our partners we the the. The database we have developed. So Gramin Shakti is one of the focal uh, focal points of Inforce, and uh, uh, with this partnership, we have been uh, working uh, with this EVD project. That, as one, a few of our my fellow speakers already mentioned, we have been working in four uh, four Asian countries, and uh, Gramin Shakti is also working in this same project from the very beginning. And uh, this is the uh, this is the website which uh, we we developed through our our partnership, and now I'll be discussing on more how what was the aspiration of uh, developing this sort of database so we see that uh, often we develop uh, many interesting solutions uh, many countries uh, they may either be locally or regionally uh, sometimes these uh, local solutions are not well well preserved or well uh, archived so we thought that why not archive all these uh, solutions which, which we were developing like gramin shakti we have this uh, experience of working with the rural people for more than 25 years. So throughout our journey, we have uh, developed many of the local solutions. Uh, like us, other, other partner organizations, they have also developed uh, similar solutions. So we thought of developing a database where we can incorporate all the local solutions, all the local ideas which, which we are developing. And yeah, of course, when we are developing uh, a, a platform where there are, uh, there are data on many solutions or ideas, that will also help to disseminate the knowledge, and of course, will uh, will uh, contribute to replication of the of the solutions. Not in uh, Bangladesh or maybe the other countries as well. So, with this uh, aspiration, we uh, we started developing uh, our database, and currently, uh, uh, in the in our database, there there are solutions for from four countries. Uh, we have uh, uh, separated our uh, our our solutions in in five different categories, and at, at present. Uh, we have uh, more than 40 solutions in this database. Okay, so these are the ca categories I was talking about. Like we have the off-grid power and light. We have cooking solutions, and that's not only from Bangladesh. Uh, many all all four countries. Uh, if you go by the country, you'll see uh, the cooking solutions which we have in Bangladesh, all, all, all also in Nepal and Sri Lanka, some other countries. Then we have solutions for water. We have organic garden and agriculture. Then heating and cooling. Okay, now I'll be I'll be. Uh, uh, talking about few of the uh, solutions or examples which we will we'll, we'll have in the database. For instance, in, in Bangladesh, um, we have uh, installed around 6 million solar home systems, which is one of, uh, I would say, that's the highest in the world. So in the database, you, you'll see what are the types of uh, solar home systems which, which we have in Bangladesh, what, uh, how, does, how much a solar home system would cost, and if someone is interested to buy a solar home system, where to go and how can he buy it? 
Now, in, in the recent time, due to this Russia and Ukraine war, we see many people, uh, many people are facing this issue of load shedding and power cut, and they often reach out to Gramin Shakti, and they are interested to, uh, to purchase solar home system or uh, solutions like this. So now we can uh, just refer them to the uh, this database, and they can easily find and uh, find the solution over there. Uh, then, uh, then from uh, from uh, Nepal, they have uh, this uh, uh, technology of hydraulic ramp pump, which is a solution that helps to uh, pump your water in the upstreams. Uh, yeah. So, then in India, as already mentioned, Mr. San by Mr. Sanjeev, that they have developed this Hira Chula, which uh, which not only contributes to reduce the interior air, air pollution, but also also taps the pollutants in the in the water and that uh, contributes to GSG emission and uh, yeah, all this. And in the, the database, you'll, you'll get to see uh, all the details of Hirachula and other stops we have. Then in the database, we are not all, only talking about the solutions, but we are also talking about uh, some tools and techniques which you can learn, uh, which we sort of develop. Like, uh, for instance, we have a tool, we call it uh, Village Development Plan, or VDP. Now. Uh, VDP is a bottom-up approach, uh, which we, we uh, uh, do in our EVD project. And we, we, we go through a participatory rural appraisal process. And, and uh, with this VDP, we try to first understand the challenges and issues uh, the village people they have. And, and uh, understanding that, we provide some customized local solutions from our EVD basket. So these sort of tools and techniques are also in this database. So this is a QR code. Uh, if you are interested, you can scan and you can directly go to our uh, our database and see the solutions we have there. And also uh, from EVD, we are working on a concept of social enterprise model. The thing is, when uh, we develop some local solutions, there are always a questions comes that will these solutions uh, survive without funding or financial support? So uh, through our EVD, we are we are working to develop a model which will be self-sustaining, which can, um, uh, which, uh, which uh, have this potential to replicate and, and create more impacts. So with this, uh, with this ideology, we are working on this uh, social enterprise model thing. And uh, this is a very conceptual uh, thing. I'm not going to the detail of it. So this is a concept of uh, community-based biogas plant, which we, from Grameen Shakti, we have developed. And, and we believe that this sort of uh, model uh, can contribute to make, uh, make this system, system self-sustaining. So, yeah, I think that's all from uh, my end, and uh, here's my contact, and uh, if you have any queries or any feedbacks, uh, feel free to reach me out, and, uh, and yeah, the database I mentioned, if you want to add your solutions or you have some ideas which you think that needs to be uh, um, archived, you can reach out to us, and you, can, you are welcome to be a member of Inforce, and, uh, we can jointly contribute to this uh, contribute to this activity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arif. And uh, I also would like to mention that uh, also the, both the East Africa and uh, this uh, <coughs> South Asian uh, database, we are very much welcome new inputs, and we have templates, and people can join that. And I also would like to show that uh, there is a social technical manual, which is also available in uh, Nepali, uh, uh, Sinhala, Bangladeshi, and Hindi. And this is how the book looks like from East Africa. <laughs> and now I would like to introduce Domindu Herat from IDEA Sri Lanka. And he will speak about local solutions in the GST, the global stock tech, and why and how. Welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, now, my life is so easier because everyone has presented a lot about the solutions and the mitigation and adaptation aspects here. So thank you all for that. Now, I'm Dumidu and I represent Sri Lanka. We, we have an organization called IDEA, Integrated Development Association, which has worked in Sri Lanka for over 30 years on sustainable energy solutions. 
particularly in the rural sector. Uh, so we have a lot of experiences and, uh, and in terms of EBD, I'll, I'll just present uh, what local solutions can do and in the process of GST as well. Now, are we getting there? 1.5. I think it's, it's a mere fantasy that we are getting to 1.5 with the local actions we have right now, the NDCs and the climate action plans we have presented. So I'm not just stating this, but it's according to IPCC that I'm stating this, that it's not possible. And if you want to reach two degrees, of course, uh, we can reach two degrees if we accelerate some rapid action on ground. So without that, it's not possible. But there are some other scientific evidences that say it's not even close to two. So it's, 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 it's in between two and three, the centigrade that, that, that we are going to reach. <laughs> so uh, that's a kind of calamity that's, that we are facing right now. Now, this is where local solutions matter. Now, we don't care about local solutions, and we, we are talking about reaching 1.5 and reaching 2. So is it possible without... Uh, and we have been so oblivious when it comes, you know, having these solutions in the NDCs. So this is why it's vital that we include local actions in uh, the NDCs and local plans. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to talk about all the solutions here, but I'm going to concentrate on the biomass matter. Now, around, around one third of the global population, that is 2.4 billion people worldwide, still remain without access to clean cooking. So, again, it's from WHO, and actually it contributes to around one gigaton of CO2 equivalent per year. That, that represents around 2% of global emissions emissions. Now, carbon dioxide is not just one mere factor, but the main factor here is the black carbon, which is one of the main key contributors. Now, of course, if we, if we uh, deploy something like an efficient cook stove, of course, we can reduce the fuel use by 30 to 60 percent, which, which would ultimately uh, kind of help us in achieving low levels of black carbon. Now, what is the science behind it? Though CO2 dominates long-term warming, the reduction of warming short-lived climate forces. So black carbon is a short-lived climate force, can in the short term contribute, to, contribute significantly to limiting warming to 1.5. So that's why these local solutions are really important. They can, uh, they can do a lot uh, in reducing the carbon emissions and reaching 1.5 in the shorter term itself. So because it's, it's very easy to, I mean, it's easier than, I mean, uh, coming up with centralized solutions. These are decentralized solutions we are talking about and easy to deploy and install if you have a proper plan and a mechanism in a country. And it comes with a lot of core benefits. What I'm prioritizing here is uh, not the climate action here, but uh, it, it entails social inclusion, improved air to people like uh, people in the rural communities, energy security, poverty eradication, health, the gender responsiveness, and food security aspects. So while we are achieving these targets, which, which are the priorities in developing countries, we are combating climate change as well at the same time. Uh, in uh, contributing to reducing carbon emissions. Now, if you, if you talk about uh, the SARC countries here, now, in terms of biomass cook stoves, around uh, six out of eight countries here have di either directly or di uh, indirectly, um, I mean, included improved cook stoves in their NDCs itself. So there's, there seems to be some sort of commitment and some sort of recognition when it comes to local solutions, such as improved cooks, cook stores. Now, the inclusion of local solutions in NDCs. So I'm just presenting some, some um, optimistic uh, uh, interventions here. So in the NDCs of Nepal, they have included 
that uh, by 2030, 25% of households would uh, utilize electric stoves. And uh, by 2025, installing 500,000 improved cook stoves and uh, installing 200,000 biogas, household biogas plants uh, on ground. So by 2030, of course, they are showing a reduction of 23% uh, of CO2 from the cooking sector. Now, we have similar interventions from Bangladesh as well, but not as concrete as uh, uh, which is in Nepal. But they have this national action plan for clean cooking, uh, which, uh, which has a horizon of 2020 to 2030. And Bangladesh has a plan for reducing short-lived climate pollutants as well. So there are some optimism there. What's next? Of course, there's a risk that uh, if ND, uh, NDCs don't reflect local solutions, uh, there's a risk that uh, it would not be reflected in the GST process itself. So what we kind of, we firmly believe that uh, G the GST process should report on the existing solutions which, are, which have been successful on ground in the respective nations. That is, that is one of the key elements. Then they should look for reporting what is like the inclusion of these solutions in the NDCs. And then we have to see what else we can do, what potential we have, and in the future what we can do in terms of including these solutions in the GST process. And uh, of course, we are far behind, uh, I mean, the temperature goal as well as the finance goal here. So I think even for the local actions, we need equal finance uh, to, I mean, to contribute to these uh, global emission reductions in the future. Of course, Infose has done uh, our own uh, GST submissions to the process itself. So, and uh, there's something more I have to share because in some countries, they, the inclusion of local solutions would be avoided because they don't have uh, enough data and information of the potential they have in terms of uh, mitigation and adaptation. Of course, we have this, <laughs> this document which shows the potential of adaptation and mitigation uh, in terms of the solutions on ground. So this is what they can use as well, and the countries can uh, have this information. So uh, that is the brief from me, so if you want to clarify anything, of course, I'm ready to do that. Thank you very much. Have a good evening and have a day. Thank you very much, Domindo, and I really hope that they are listening to us about this, that to include local solutions in the NDCs and uh, global stock take. It will be really very important uh, for the future. And now it's the time for uh, the comments. And uh, I would like to introduce Stefan Nizioka, Ministry of the Energy at the Department of Renewable Energy in Kenya. And uh, do we have also uh, Tusita Sugatapala from Sri Lanka here? Yeah, hi, welcome. So, uh, no, Stefan, Stefan, please just be here. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and uh, I would like to hear some of your comments. Uh, and I don't know. Uh, yes, please. Just disconnect. Yes. Okay. You want to uh, maybe I just uh, I just want to make some comments on the presentations that have been done, and if you look across board from uh, East Africa to uh, Europe and Asia. The local solutions uh, to sustainable energy seems the, to be the way to go for us to be able to achieve 100% uh, renewable energy. And um, 
I was so impressed by some of the things that are being done across the countries to address issues on sustainable uh, energy. In our country, um, we are moving a bit faster in, in Africa compared to other um, regions in Africa uh, because currently we have um, installed capacity of uh, electricity being from renewable energy, 77%. And whatever we are now uh, able to get to the market, uh, I mean, this patch is 94% of renewable energy. And we want to reach 100% by 2030. We have even a bigger goal of achieving clean cooking by 2028. And um, we are looking at uh, the local solutions. The local solutions that um, are being advocated in this um, um, forum to achieve the clean cooking by 2028. So some of the things that we're trying to do is um, like um, intermediate between uh, reaching cleaner solutions, we are advocating for improved cookstoffs and um, Infos has been in the front, forefront uh, to do that. We have worked very well with them. Um, um, NGOs and uh, uh, civil societies because we know that they have um, some capacities that are lacking maybe within um, the limited staff who are doing uh, energy dissemination in our country. For example, they, are, they have the data like we have seen from the presentation. Uh, if you looked at uh, the data they have archived, that is possible being done by um, infos, I mean, um, entities that are being supported by infos. So we really appreciate uh, the role the NGOs and the civil societies in our country play uh, uh, as we move towards 100% renewable. For example, we have a 100% renewable project which is also being led by um, Many, uh, we have a lot of support from the civil societies uh, for us to be able to reach 100% renewable. So I congratulate uh, all the presenters who have really presented uh, the items and uh, across board, um, if we adopt the local solutions, then we can be able to achieve sustainable energy. For example, uh, the issue of bamboo that was presented, it looks so simple. But if you look at it, it's um, a solution that is being adapted. When you look at um, the clean cook stuff, um, reducing the, uh, uh, the amount of, um, the amount of uh, greenhouse gases by use of um, improved cook stuffs, uh, which are being promoted in, uh, in, in Africa. In our country, we are trying to, we, we have, uh, uh, as a ministry, we have developed a, a bioenergy strategy 2020, which was launched in 2020, and also energy efficiency, uh, national energy efficiency and conservation strategy, which are, we are focusing addressing the issue of sustainable energy. Currently, we are developing a clean cooking uh, strategy and electricity cooking strategy, bearing in mind that um, we have a mismatch in the space of um, um, clean cooking using electricity. For example, I've said that uh, we have installed capacity of 77% of um, uh, renewable energy, which is green. But only 1% of the citizens are able to use electricity for cooking. So that gap between 90, 94%, which is being dispatched to the communities, I mean to the population, and again as 1% of the people are using. So we're not trying to promote um, local solutions that we can be able to use uh, um, electricity. And even decentralized systems. We have realized some companies in our country, uh, they are promoting solar uh, cooking, where, where we have the decentralized, uh, they, they, they have improvised a system that can, can be able to use uh, solar to cook. Last week, about two weeks ago, I was in Kigali, um, on a Gogla event and um, they brought those local solutions where you're able to utilize the uh, uh, solar for clean cooking, for even milling, um, 
milling of maize and um, other activities that are geared towards productive use. So we are moving from the grid to um, uh, other solutions that uh, you are really promoting that can be used by the populations. So uh, from the government uh, point of view, uh, each government can be able to take what has been presented here and implement and working together with uh, the civil societies and NGOs and other development partners, I believe uh, our countries uh, can be able to move forward and have sustainable energy. Even if we don't reach 100% by 2030, we'll be closer uh, to that by 2030. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and welcome to, to CETA. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Uh, yeah, uh, I should congratulate all these uh, researchers here. A uh, lot of effort has been gone to have been gone to this outcomes and I see uh, a beauty there basically indicating the society with the technology uh, resolving the uh, not only climate or the environment issues basically sustain European goals I think this paid the path for SDGs much m uh, needed you know uh, the development we talk about on the ground um, and all this technology, what you see there, has come through, uh, I think, very detailed, uh, uh, comprehensive uh, efforts. I have my own experience, for example, in this uh, Anagi store, uh, where the uh, idea presented. Uh, three decades back, I took the Anagi store uh, through my hand luggage to uh, AIT, Asian Store of Technology, to, the, to do the testing. We didn't have testing facility in Sri Lanka, so I took it. Uh, and then I had to explain this one to both uh, immigration officers what this means. Uh, so I explained what this could store. We did the testing for emissions, uh, air pollutants, water boiler test, everything. So that technology information has been the key, I think, to come to this level. Now we have, more, I think, more than 20% of our population use that particular store. I think all these technologies has that type of uh, background. So I propose I, uh, you know, uh, think that you also have this uh, information on these technologies which can be promoted uh, to solve the present crisis. So as highlighted again and again, this is a local solution developed by local people with the local resources. It has all the key elements in SDGs. So therefore we have to promote this one. We have the solution. We are in the other stores we talk about new solution, but here those solutions, solutions are there. I would say this is a sleeping giant. We have to wake this up, make it uh, more uh, like mainstream these technologies uh, to the society. And in fact, this is, should go across the borders because this solution, what you see there, is well applicable for most of the countries in the, our part of the world. Of course, we have to have adaptation to local context. So that needs research, development, and so on. But I see uh, green light there, so that's uh, I said that you should congratulate, congratulate all of you for this one, but you should not start, stop here. I think you have to go forward, uh, make sure that this, uh, these are mainstream. Very recently in Sri Lanka, we have uh, established what you call Sustainable Development Goal uh, Investment Platform. And uh, we have identified investment opportunity areas. Now, this is now uh, uh, advertised uh, in the global platform by UNDP. There we have included uh, improved custo. In the first time, this one uh, we can go to then identify uh, those opportunities. So we have now uh, uh, exposed the opportunity for global funding for improved custos. So that's published there. Therefore, there are opportunities. I think we should not uh, stop here. I think this is a very good starting point. So with that, I will conclude uh, my brief uh, uh, notes on that one. Uh, congratulations again for all of you. Uh, I think uh, there are a uh, long way to go, so please make sure that these technologies, uh, you know, flow into the society and, you know, uh, promote it further. Uh, with that, I will conclude. Thank you very much.
Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, now I would like to uh, give further the, uh, further the, the words and the <laughs> yeah. uh, Thank you, my, um, uh, all previous speakers, uh, for taking us through a journey of local solutions. Uh, I think over the course of the last 120 minutes, I think we have uh, uh, gone through three uh, continents almost, looking at local solutions, solving various kind of problems across various sectors, starting from the um, uh, cook stoves to the household sector, uh, to transportation, uh, to providing energy solutions, to various ways of uh, uh, work. So uh, these solutions are really uh, doing its work. It's, it's uh, uh, mitigating uh, greenhouse gas reductions. It's, it's adapting the lo local solutions. Uh, people are really getting benefit. The livelihoods are getting improved over the course of time. So uh, we also presented that we have been working in through these solutions over, a, uh, over 2015. So last seven years, we have documented evidences that these solutions are really, really work at the, at the grassroots level and help communities to, uh, uh, um, uh, to, to manage to their whatever resources they have at the local level and also adapt to the local solutions. So we, we present a kind of a um, strong um, argument uh, to, to our policymakers at the local level to at the national level and also at the international level, such as the UNFCCC, that these solutions need to be part of the uh, uh, part of the planning process, part of the um, um, it, it's it's maybe due to N NDCs or maybe national adaptation plan, uh, which are being prepared at, at the uh, national level. So we we strongly make a case that these solutions should be part of that, and we also say that how the global stock take would also really take cognizance of these solutions and make mitigation ambition and adaptation goals uh, stronger by, by including those solutions. There is no point uh, to look for uh, false solutions such as uh, uh, carbon capture and storage and, uh, and other false solutions when these solutions are available already and documented evidences are available uh, uh, within FOSE and, and uh, with the project which we are doing across Europe, East Africa, and South Asia. So no, no need to go beyond, uh, to see beyond that and look for false solutions to, uh, to uh, you know, hide behind. So with that, I think uh, we, we are ready to take a couple of questions from the audience. So I have a mic in my hand. So if you have any questions, uh, um, please point out to the speaker who want to um, um, answer that. Then I could hand it over the mic to you. Hello? Yeah, if there are some questions, <laughs> there's one there. Just short, we don't have much time, but please. Yes, thank you. I'm Alan Bigelow from Solar Cookers International, and congratulations to all of you for your presentations and implementing solutions. I was really impressed with the array of solutions that you have. And one question, uh, Sanjeev Natan maybe is about the implementation of all these solutions. Do they happen at once or do they happen ver uh, just a few in various places? Because I, I'm imagining that the education is, is, ex is extremely important to train everybody. And also I'd like to ask, are you considering solar thermal cooking, a very simple option to cook food with the sunshine, free fuel. And in the sense that uh, Nepal, for instance, is aiming to have 25% cooking with electricity um, in the near future, what about the remaining 75%? There's a lot of sunshine in, in uh, Nepal, so please consider solar thermal. I'd like, like to hear uh, other comments about that. Thank you. Are there more comments here? Then we'll just, if the oh, would you also? No. Okay. So Sanjeev, maybe you first, and then if others would like to answer. Uh, thank you. It's a very good question. Actually, uh, we have been working, as uh, you have mentioned, uh, since 2015, and then our uh, journey started long back with EVD phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, and we have been training people uh, in different places. Now, uh, talking about, say, for example, uh, Anagi stove from Sri Lanka. 
uh, they have been working on this store for uh, so many years and now if they have reached that they are uh, making 1.5 uh, million uh, they have reached that 1.5 million uh, anage stores installed but that has not happened in a day it has taken long journey same way uh, nepal they have been uh, working on the stores and then now move to induction cooker and in india we have this biogas plant we have trained uh, manpower in several places uh, uh, and then now we have come to stage now in this project what we are doing is we are creating a demonstration uh, village where we are placing all this technology in each country uh, creating a village where we are installing all the technologies possible technologies that so far uh, within our budget, uh, budget whatever the project uh, feasible uh, was feasible there are several other technologies as possibilities which we want like uh, solar uh, thermal solar parabolic cooker and there are some other technologies they are in the database if you go through that uh, there are some in the database but then we would like to have you can also contribute to these uh, to the database and then um, we can also have if opportunity is there we would like to have uh, the place these technologies in the uh, demonstration village so that wider community in india in uh, in these uh, south asian countries can come and uh, view all those technology and uh, gain you know uh, inspiration thank you if there is yeah anyone would like to add something to that yeah just a short reply to this question uh, in our in this uh, catalog from east africa we collected solutions which were popular with at least the users and we have a, we also have solar cooking in in there yeah any any more questions you have from flo you know, any online questions you have okay uh so i think yeah thank you sir for the for the question thank for discussion uh i think we we come to the conclusion of uh, of, of this session so uh, thank you very much for your participation and thank you uh, for all our speakers uh, to um, to running through the uh, other presentations and talking about their successful work and we wish all the best to the speakers and also to the other thank you so much thank you all And we would like also to make a, a photo here, uh, just uh, quickly about the panel, please, uh, those involved. And thank you very much for the participation on this uh, Saturday. And uh, we really appreciate people are online and offline are here. Thank you very much.